500,000 Zorgax warships hung silently over the blue planet. Then they vanished. No trace, no debris, just gone. Earth, the death world. When the Zorgax Empire finally reached the dreaded planet and scanned its primitive surface, they expected a quick conquest to expand their totalitarian reign another light year. But the ships never returned. Like a black hole had swallowed the fleet whole. Commander Murloc crawled from his crashed ship's wreckage, dazed and confused. His Delton body ached. Emergency warnings flashed across his neural interface. All systems offline. No comms from the fleet. Out of nowhere, an energy field had erupted from the planet, engulfing Murloc's ship and sending it tumbling through the atmosphere. Now he stood on the surface of the infamous Death World itself. Countless other Zorgak survivors emerged from crash-landed ships scattered across the alien landscape. They were stranded on humanity's homeworld. In the dead of night, Patrick Brown crept through the underbrush towards the smoldering remains of a Zorgax cruiser. An era special ops soldier, he had one mission. Infiltrate the ship and gather intel for Earth's defense. He slipped inside through a ragged hull breach. His pupils widened at the technological wonders within. Advanced beyond anything humans had built. But no power thrummed through the ship's veins. Consoles dark. The surviving crew moved about like ghosts lost and directionless. As Brown collected what alien systems he could and retreated into the shadows, reports poured in from around the globe. Surviving Zorgax grouped together, fought among themselves for control. While light years away, Emperor Zolthar seethed with rage at word of the fleet's disappearance. He demanded the primitive Death Worlders be crushed, their energy weapons seized, a million ships to replace those lost. He would not let some backwater species best the mighty Zorgax Empire. Earth had repelled the Zorgax for now through sheer chance, but they wouldn't stop. They never stopped. Humanity had mere months, maybe less, before an even greater armada darkened the skies. The greatest war in human history loomed. Soldiers, spies, and scientists worked feverishly to unravel the alien tech secrets and bolster Earth's meager defenses. For if they failed, if the Death World's strange energy field proved no match for Zolthar's wrath, then billions would burn under the Zorgax's march of conquest. This time, Earth's isolation would be its doom. In the depths of a classified government facility, Dr. Samantha Reed hunched over a workbench, eyes locked on the alien device before her. Its sleek, obsidian surface seemed to drink in the harsh fluorescent light. She prodded it with a variety of instruments, brow furrowed in concentration. Fascinating, she muttered, more to herself than her colleagues. The quantum field readings are off the charts. This technology interfaces with the Terran field in ways we never imagined possible. Across the room, Xyloth, the Zorgax defector, nodded. My people have long sought to harness such energies, but even our most advanced science pales in comparison to what your world naturally possesses. Dr. Reed glanced up, meeting the alien's gaze. An understanding passed between them, a shared awe at the implications of their discovery. With this knowledge, she said slowly, we might stand a chance, a slim one, but a chance nonetheless. Miles away, Patrick Brown crept through the shadows of a crashed Zorgax frigate. His heiress team fanned out behind him. They moved with practiced efficiency, stripping the ship of weapons, power cells, anything that could give Earth an edge. Brown paused at a flickering console, his suit's translator module struggling to decipher the alien script. Fragmented reports of the Empire's movements scrolled across the screen. They're coming, he whispered into his comm, and they're bringing something big, experimental. We need to move faster. As Brown and his team raced to salvage what they could, world leaders gathered in secret, Faces grim as they pored over the latest intelligence reports. The Zorgax had adapted quickly to their losses, and now a storm gathered at the edges of the solar system. General Valdez, newly appointed head of Earth's Unified Defense Command, stood before the assembled leaders. We face an enemy unlike any in human history, he said, his voice gruff but steady. But we also have an opportunity unlike any before. The Terran field and the knowledge we now possess gives us a fighting chance.
We must stand together and stand strong if we are to weather the coming storm. In his command ship, Emperor Zolthar seethed, his claws gouging deep furrows into the armrests of his throne. The humiliation of the death world's resistance burned like acid in his veins. I want that planet crushed, he snarled at his cowering subordinates. I want its people enslaved and its resources stripped bare. And I want that accursed energy field under Zorgak's control. Prepare the vanguard fleet. He turned to his chief scientist, eyes narrowed. And what of your new weapon? Will it resist the Terran field? The scientist bowed low, quaking. Initial tests are promising, my lord, but we have not yet faced it against the full might of the field. There are risks. Zolthar's lips curled in a sneer. Then we shall put it to the ultimate test. Ready my ship. We depart for the death world at once. As the Emperor's new flagship powered up, Earth readied itself for the battle to come. Soldiers drilled with hybrid human Zorgax weapons, while pilots learned to fly salvaged alien craft. In hidden bunkers, Dr. Reed, Xyloth, and their team worked tirelessly to decipher the secrets of the Terran field. The final pieces were falling into place. The Zorgax Armada would arrive within days, dwarfing their previous incursion a hundredfold. The Death World had bloodied the Empire's nose, but now the true test began. In the face of annihilation, mankind would rise or fall as one. The battle for Earth and the fate of the stars was about to begin. Commander Murloc's mandibles clicked as he surveyed the ragtag group of Zorgak survivors huddled in the shadow of their crashed cruiser. The once proud warriors now looked lost, their exoskeletons dulled by Earth's harsh sunlight. Brothers, Murloc began, his voice carrying across the makeshift camp. Our empire has abandoned us, but perhaps this is an opportunity. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Murloc pressed on, his words gaining strength. I've seen the humans' strength, their resilience. They are not the savages we were led to believe. What if there is another way, a path beyond endless conquest? As Murloc spoke, Patrick Brown watched from the tree line. His high-tech optics zoomed in on the alien gathering. He tapped his comm unit. Command, are you getting this? Affirmative, came the terse reply. Proceed with caution, Agent Brown. This could be our chance. Hours later, under the cover of darkness, Brown met Murloc in a secluded clearing. The Zorgax commander's eyes glowed faintly in the moonlight. You took a risk coming here. Brown said, hand resting on his sidearm. Murloc's antennae twitched. As did you, human. But desperate times call for... What is your expression? Desperate measures? Brown nodded, a hint of a smile tugging at his lips. What exactly are you proposing, Commander? An alliance, Murloc said, his voice low and urgent. My people are tired of Zolthar's tyranny. With your help, we could overthrow him. End this war before it consumes both our species. Brown's eyes narrowed. And why should we trust you? Because, Murloc replied, I have something you need. Intelligence, technology, the key to stopping Zolthar's invasion force. In a hidden facility beneath the Rocky Mountains, Dr. Samantha Reed's fingers flew across a holographic interface. Alien symbols swirled and shifted coalescing into patterns that made her breath catch. Xyloth, she called to her Zorgax colleague. Look at this. The Terran field, it's not just a shield. It's alive somehow. The defector's compound eyes widened as he studied the display. Impossible, he whispered. Yet, it explains so much. Their revelations were cut short as alarms blared throughout the complex. On screens around the lab, satellite feeds showed a terrifying sight, the sky above Earth darkening with the arrival of Zolthar's armada. General Valdez's voice crackled over the intercom, tight with tension. All personnel, battle stations. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. As chaos erupted across the globe, a small group gathered in a fortified bunker. Brown stood beside Murloc, facing a panel of grim-faced world leaders. Gentlemen, Brown said, gesturing to the Zorgax commander, I believe we have our ace in the hole. High above, in the cold vacuum of space, 
Emperor Zolthar's flagship hung like a chitinous dagger aimed at Earth's heart. On the bridge, General Kravox's mandibles clicked in anticipation. My Emperor, he hissed, bowing low, our new shields are holding against the accursed Terran field. Shall we begin the assault? Zolthar's eyes glowed with malevolent glee. Crush them, General. Let the death world burn. As the first salvos rained down on Earth's cities, Dr. Reed's team worked feverishly to unravel the final secrets of the Terran field. In orbit, a hastily assembled fleet of retrofitted Zorgax ships, crewed by humans and alien defectors alike, moved to engage the invasion force. And deep within the bowels of Zolthar's flagship, Brown and Murloc led a small strike team through darkened corridors. Their mission? To sabotage the experimental shields and give Earth a fighting chance. The fate of two species hung in the balance as the battle for Earth began in earnest. The sky ignited. A pulse of coruscating energy erupted from dozens of hastily constructed amplifiers across the globe, coalescing into a focused wave that slammed into the Zorgax fleet. Ship after ship flickered and went dark, their experimental shields collapsing under the onslaught of the Terran field. On the bridge of Zolthar's flagship, alarms shrieked as systems failed. General Kravox's mandibles clacked in dismay. Impossible! Our shields... The door to the bridge exploded inward. Patrick Brown burst through the smoke, his strike team fanning out behind him, their weapons trained on the Zorgax commander. It's over, General, Brown said, his voice cold. Your invasion has failed. Kravox's eyes narrowed. You think this changes anything, human? Emperor Zolthar will... Will what? Brown interrupted, tossing a data crystal onto the deck. It projected a hologram of the Emperor's private logs. Harvest the Terran field for himself? Leave you and your people to die on this primitive world? The General's compound eyes widened as he absorbed the damning evidence. His claws clenched, anger radiating from every plate of his exoskeleton. This, this cannot be, Kravox hissed. It is, Brown said. Now you have a choice. Help us end this war or go down with your traitorous emperor. For a long moment, the bridge was silent, save for the wail of alarms. Then Kravox straightened, rage burning in his eyes. What would you have me do? In orbit, the Terran Alliance fleet surged forward. A patchwork armada of retrofitted Zorgax ships and hastily upgraded human vessels swarmed the crippled invasion force. Lasers lanced through space, finding targets with eerie precision now that the aliens' defenses were down. Captain Sarah Chen gritted her teeth as she brought her ship around for another attack run. The Zorgax cruiser loomed before her, its weapons dark. All units, fire at will, she barked into the comm. A hail of missiles streaked from her ship, joined by salvos from a dozen others. The Zorgax vessel crumpled under the assault, secondary explosions chaining through its hull. Chen allowed herself a grim smile. They were winning. On the ground, Commander Murloc led the charge into the Zorgax terrestrial base. Eris operatives moved like ghosts at his flanks, their hybrid weapons cutting down fanatical defenders. Push forward, Murloc shouted, his own plasma rifle spitting death. We must secure the command center. They fought room by room, level by level. Murloc's intimate knowledge of Zorgax tactics proving invaluable. Finally, they breached the inner sanctum. Surrender! Murloc demanded, facing down the base commander, his former superior. The other Zorgax sneered. Never, traitor, for the Emperor. Murloc's shot took him square in the chest. As the dust settled, Murloc turned to the human beside him. We've done it. The archives are ours. In her lab, Dr. Reed's hands flew across holographic displays. There, she exclaimed. The field modulation is stable. Xyloth, start fabrication. The Zorgax scientist nodded, his manipulators already dancing across the controls of their jury rig manufacturing unit. Within minutes, the first personal energy shield materialized. Reed snatched it up, her eyes gleaming. With these, we can board their ships. Take the fight to them directly. Across the planet, battles raged. Human tanks rolled through city streets, trading fire with entrenched Zorgax positions. In the skies above, 
fighters dueled with alien craft. But everywhere, the tide was turning. Days passed in a blur of combat and conquest. One by one, the Zorgax ships fell silent or surrendered. Victory seemed assured. Then came the news that chilled Brown to his core. Emperor Zolthar had escaped. In a hidden bunker, world leaders gathered around tactical displays. General Valdez's face was grim as he delivered his report. The bulk of the invasion force has been neutralized, he said, but our worst fears have been confirmed. Zolthar possesses a doomsday weapon capable of destroying not just Earth, but destabilizing the entire galaxy. Silence fell over the room, then Patrick Brown stepped forward, willpower etched on his features. Then we find him, he said, and we end this once and for all. Brown's words hung in the air, heavy with purpose. The assembled leaders exchanged grim nods, their faces etched with the weight of what lay ahead. We have a lead, Murloc announced, his mandibles clicking softly. He tapped a claw against a holographic display, bringing up a swirling map of uncharted space. Our analysis of the captured Zorgax data points to a hidden facility in the Cracks Nebula. We believe it's where Zolthar plans to enact his final play. General Valdez leaned forward, eyes narrowing. What kind of facility are we talking about? A cloning complex, Murloc replied, his compound eyes flickering. Vast in scale and heavily fortified, it appears to be the cornerstone of the Emperor's contingency plan. Before the implications could fully sink in, alarms blared throughout the bunker. Dr. Reed's face appeared on a nearby screen, her expression a mix of triumph and dread. We've cracked it, she said, her words tumbling out in a rush. The captive scientist talked. Zolthar's weapon. It's beyond anything we imagined. A subspace tear device powered by dark antimatter. If activated, it could create an expanding singularity capable of consuming entire star systems. The room erupted in a cacophony of voices. Brown raised a hand, silencing the chaos. Doctor, he said, his voice steady. Can it be stopped? Reed's eyes flicked to something off screen. When she spoke again, her words were measured. Yes, but at a terrible cost. We can overload the device, causing an implosion that would neutralize the antimatter. But doing so within the Terran field's boundary would permanently disrupt it. Earth would lose its protective shroud forever. Silence fell, heavy and oppressive. General Valdez broke it, his voice barely above a whisper. So we trade our shield for the safety of the galaxy. The vote was quick, unanimous. Earth would sacrifice its miraculous defense to save countless worlds from Zolthar's madness. Hours later, Brown found himself strapped into a retrofitted Zorgax dropship, surrounded by a strike team of human soldiers and alien rebels. Murloc sat across from him, checking the seals on his environment suit. The Cracks Nebula is not exactly hospitable, the Zorgax commander explained, noticing Brown's gaze. Toxic atmosphere, extreme radiation. Even we can't survive long without protection. Brown nodded, his own suit feeling claustrophobic. He glanced around at the assembled team, the best Earth and its newfound allies had to offer. Their mission, infiltrate the cloning facility, stop Zolthar, and give Dr. Reed's team the window they needed to trigger the device's implosion. The dropship shuddered as it entered the nebula's turbulent gases. Through the viewport, Brown caught glimpses of roiling clouds shot through with veins of eerie light. At the center of the maelstrom, a dark shape began to dedication itself, a moon pockmarked and desolate. There, Murloc said, pointing a clawed hand, the facility is built into the moon's core. We'll have to... His words were cut off as energy beams lanced past the ship. Alarms shrieked, and the pilot's voice crackled over the comm. Multiple hostiles incoming! Brace for impact! The dropship banked hard, narrowly avoiding a barrage of plasma fire. Through the chaos, Brown caught sight of their attackers, sleek fighters piloted by identical Zorgax warriors. Clones. So it begins, Murloc growled, hefting his weapon. As the dropship screamed towards the moon's surface, Brown steeled himself for the battle ahead. They had one chance to stop Zolthar and save all of the universe. The true test of humanity's grit was about to begin. You have reached the end of the story. 
If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.